Okay, welcome back. In this final part, I'm going to show you how to render out your final animation using the EV render engine. I'm also going to be rendering this animation out using the cycles render engine so we can compare the results and see which one you like better. Let's get started with EV first. I'm going to turn back on overlays so we can see all the objects in our scene. Then I'm just going to make this window bigger because we will be going back to the shader editor later on. I'm going to orbit around my scene and just deselect. And then let's go into the camera. I'm going to go into render mode to see what the render is looking like in Eevee. Let's go back to frame one and let's just add in another light because I think the backside of the robots look a bit too dark. So I'm going to go ahead and just do shift A to add in another area light. And then I'll use the move tool and move it up and I'll move it back here. Let's orbit around the scene, maybe move it a little more up. And I'm going to use the rotate tool and point it at my robots. Okay, then I'll change the power to 1000 watts. Okay, now if I go back to the camera view, we can see that the backside of the robots look a lot better or a lot brighter. All right, now we can go ahead and just go into solid mode and do a quick preview render and see what a single frame looks like in Eevee. So I'm gonna go to a random frame like frame 75 and I'll just go ahead and hit render image to see a single frame. And look at that, it renders out super fast in one second for a single frame. It looks like the right side wall here looks a little too washed out for my taste. So I'm gonna end up changing that. I'm gonna go back to the shader editor right here and I'm gonna click on the right wall. Let's hit home to go see the node setup. Go back into rendered mode. We could go zoom in, move these nodes aside and I wanna add in something called a hue and saturation node. So let's do shift A search for hue and saturation comes up right here and I'll plug it in between the Voronite texture and the emission. And now I can just increase the saturation, which will bring back more color to the wall here. So let's do 1.5. I'll also change the strength to something like 1.5 as well. So that adds in more light into our scene. Okay. That's pretty much it for this note setup. So I'll go ahead and collapse this window. Okay. I'm going to use the select box tool. I'll go to the render properties now. Let's just turn off overlays. We're going to start tweaking the settings in Eevee. So first off for the samples, I'm going to stick to 64 samples because I've tested it and 64 samples in Eevee looks completely fine for the final animation. If you want to bump up the quality, you can bump it up to 128 if you want, but I didn't really see much of a difference. So we'll just stick to 64. Okay. We'll leave on shadows and ray tracing is obviously going to be on. We'll go down to motion blur and check mark that to add in some more cinematic emotion. Then we'll go down to performance and we'll just check mark high quality normals. Okay. Then I'll go down to color management and I like to keep it at AGX for the view transform. You can also do standard, but I really don't like the colors here. They, the highlights seem to blow out and the colors just do not look that good. Uh, we can also do filmic as well, which is what I used to do back in the older versions of Blender. But again, I don't like the colors here. I rather just do AGX. Then if you want to add some contrast, you can just change the look here to high contrast. I think that's too much. So maybe let's do medium high. Let's do medium high contrast. So that's pretty much it for the settings in Eevee. Now let's go to the output properties and for the resolution, we're going to stick to 1920 by 1080. Since I'm uploading this to YouTube, this is full HD. Okay. Then let's scroll down and we'll go to file format and change it to FFmpeg video. We'll go to the encoding and we'll change the container to MP4 because we're going to be playing this as a video file. As you get more experience with Blender, you'll probably end up start using the file format PNG later on. But for now, FFmpeg video works just fine and it's just way more convenient. Okay. Then just find a place to save your video file. So I'm going to go and choose a folder. You can choose your desktop or you can save it wherever you want. I made a specific folder called beginner tutorial series, and then I'm just going to save it inside this renders folder right here. We'll rename it to, we'll do EV first ever render. Then just hit accept and boom. Now you have a place to save your animation. Okay, now we can just go back into solid mode and we can turn back on overlays. And then finally, we can just go ahead and hit render animation. And then I'll just wait for this to render out. Again, in Eevee, rendering out animations is just super fast.
Okay, and it's done. I'm not even joking. That took about a minute, maybe a little over a minute, but like I said, uh, it was like about a second per frame, so super fast. I'm gonna go ahead and just close this out, and then we can find the video where we saved it. So I saved it right here, and I can just double click to play it. It might play weirdly in this player here. So you know what? We can actually preview it better in Blender. So we can go into Blender, click this plus icon, go to video editing, and I'll just drag here. We'll just go to, let's say, frame one, go to add, movie, and we'll just go to where we saved it. Mine was in this renders folders, EV first render, add movie strip, and there you go. Just hit play, and there you go, your first ever render in EV. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and render the same animation out using the cycles render engine and compare both the results. So let's go back to layout, and we can switch the render engine over here to cycles. So like I said, cycles requires a bit more computational resources. So just keep in mind, it will take longer to render. I highly recommend changing your device to GPU if you have one, because rendering in cycles using your CPU is just very slow. So I highly recommend using a GPU if you have one. To check if you have your GPU enabled, you can just go to edits, preferences, and then go to the systems tab here, and for you, it's just gonna be on a none by default, but you wanna actually go and either use CUDA or optics. I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card, so I like to use optics. So make sure it's checked over here and make sure your CPU is unchecked. So make sure your GPU is checked and CPU unchecked, and then go ahead and just hit save preferences and close out of that. Now that your GPU is enabled, we can change our samples right here. So we can change the max samples in our viewport to 150. And for our final render for the max samples, it's also gonna be 150. So the viewport samples is what we see live. So if we go into render mode right now, this is what we see. And oh, it looks like, I don't know why it does this, but for some reason it changes the view transform back to standard after I've done rendering out an animation. I don't know why it does this. It might be some sort of glitch, but I'm gonna change it back to AGX and medium my contrast, and this is what it looks like in cycles. We can turn off overlays to see it better, but yeah, uh, max samples is gonna be at 150. I rarely go over 300, but for this, I found that 150 works just fine. And you also wanna make sure denoise is checked, and I like to use the open image denoiser to remove any noise in my render. Okay, under performance, you just wanna make sure persistent data is checked, and that will speed up your render time because it'll carry over the data after you rendered out your frame uh, once. So let's go ahead and just do a quick preview render. So let's go back into solid mode. I'm gonna go to frame 75. And before we hit render image, we wanna make sure we go to the video editing tab and make sure we delete any video in the video editor. So just go ahead and delete this, go back to the layout, and then just hit render image. Okay, so in cycles, one frame took about 10 seconds for me versus EV, which took about a second or even less than a second. So you can see the time difference with that. So just keep that in mind. But yeah, I'm gonna go to the output properties and just rename this so it doesn't accidentally rewrite our EV uh, render file. So I'll change this name to cycles first render. Okay, and then we can just hit accept. And then you wanna check mark render region and crop the render region. And if we turn back on overlays, so what these options do is it makes sure everything inside this box is rendered while everything outside is not. So for example, if I go into rendered mode right now, you can see that it's just rendering out what's within the box and everything outside, it's not really using up those resources. So super helpful. And then I guess that's pretty much it. Again, that's pretty much it. But uh, before I render this out, I'm just gonna go back to the render properties. And for cycles, I'm actually gonna increase this to high contrast. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit render animation. All right, it's done rendering out in cycles. And like I said, that took about a little over 10 seconds per frame sometimes. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. Let's go to the video editing tab. Let's go to the frame one. Let's go to add movie and we'll add the cycles render this time. Add movie strip. This is what the cycles render looks like. And you know what? Let's bring in the EV 
render, and we'll compare both of them. So let's go add movie, and we'll bring in the EV one on top. And then we can just, you know, turn it off using this check mark right here. So this is cycles. And then this is EV cycles, EV. So the reflections on the floor on EV versus cycles, the cycles reflections look a lot more realistic. And I think they just look better overall. You can tell that the cycles render engine is just a lot more brighter. That's because there's probably more light bounces versus EV a little darker. The material on the bots also on cycles look just better in my opinion uh, versus EV again just a little more darker. Overall, I just noticed that in cycles, the image quality is just a little more brighter. So for the final result, I would actually go with cycles, but then again, it's up to you and how fast your system is. But that pretty much does it for this tutorial series. If you were able to make it till the end here, give yourself a pat on the back and you can officially call yourself a blender artist. At this point, I encourage all of you to continue practicing using Blender because obviously I was not able to cover everything in this tutorial, but I wanted to cover some of the basics so you at least have some sort of foundation with this software now. And by the way, if you want access to this entire blend file, you can download it by becoming a member on my Patreon. So consider becoming a member on my Patreon and get access to some exclusive perks. Make sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this entire tutorial series and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials. Okay, it's been your boy, only RJ, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.